Hello guys and welcome back to another satisfactory let's play. In the last episode, we quadrupled our power production to allow us to run our main factory. And as you can see at the moment, all of the resources are being sunk straight away in the awesome sinks, so we know everything is running efficiently. But today we're going to be clearing all of this as well as the stuff that's here. And we're going to be replacing all of this with what I hope will be a dedicated storage system. My only concern with this build is the kind of weird shape that we've got going on here. Because you can see we're going along a diagonal up to the end. And I'm not sure this is going to be enough space given that I'm pretty certain I want a train line going into the storage system. It'll probably have to be above. So we're going to bear that in mind, but let's get down to it and start planning what we need to do. Before I get started with the build, there are a few things that I've written down on the notes just to the right. You can see them there, uh, which is the hub connection, the overflow system to the sinks, items to be sunk, display. These are all things that we want for the perfect storage system that we're going to be doing now. So I think we'll start off in probably this line. If we take it across to about here. I want to make sure that we, we know where our train station is going to go. About that high, I want to say. And then from here, we'll also do the supports down. If I remember rightly, the train station is four and a half wide. So we'll actually need to take this out a touch more. And then we're going to extend this back as well, just so that we have a platform suitable for maybe two to three freight sections. I'm hoping that this platform will be long enough now with what we've done. I've also, I've changed these to the wider big metal pillars because I just think they look better. Uh, the other ones looked a little bit malnourished. <laughs> so we've, we've replaced them and uh, left it with these wide ones. The next thing that we need to do, given that this is the storage facility, is to work out a storage facility blueprint because well, this is the blueprint save. So we should try to use the blueprints when we can. And we've already started. We have the little elevators that we did previously to display the items. We have the storage. And then behind here, I want to add another industrial container. And then behind this, we need to, as you can see, this is the issue. Uh, stay, say we place this here. We need to have space for a sushi belt here for any items that we drop off at the storage that we don't need. And that can be resorted into the storage facility. And then we also need the dedicated line. So that's what I need to look at. Of course, with it being the blueprint save, these blueprints, once I've finished them, will be available on Patreon, should you be uh, interested in checking them out. But I will show you how I've done them once I've chosen what I'm doing. So as you can see, we have managed to do it. Uh, this is the back of the storage. I thought I'd show you this first, just so that you can get an idea. There are two layers. Now the top layer you can see uh, just in front, that is the smart splitter followed by a merger to the right, smart splitter, merger to the right. And the idea is that the direct feed of the items from the factory will go through this and into the storage. They'll each have their own dedicated line and then overflow to the merger, which is to the right of them, and then up along the, the elevator there to the awesome sink. If we drop down to the lower section, you can see here that we also have other smart splitters and these are running from left to right and it's going to be a sushi belt. The idea is that we can drop off any items that we have spare in our inventory inside a dedicated container and that will send the items back through the storage area to be sorted into the storage. And if the, the storage is full, then they will be sunk. You can see we've got the line that runs straight through all three of these and the dedicated output will be on the left here and then the center one will be sent to uh, set to overflow. And so any items that don't fill up in here, well, once this is filled up, will be overflown. And so will any other items that are being passed on that aren't designated out on this output. If we go to the front really quickly, you can see how we've done it. We've had to bring it very tight up to the front so that you can actually see these. And you'll also note that we've had to layer these up and I'm going to have to move this across ever so slightly and then add some of these beams across here just to 
make the, um, the the blueprint central so that we can try and make it fit nicely together. And here we are ready for our test. So we have the blueprint selected here. You can see we've added the painted beams along the sides here. And hopefully all we need to do is place this down. There we go, that's looking very nice. And then with this one, you can see we're going to have to run this and we have to kind of soft clip it into here. There we go. And hopefully, yeah, fantastic. The only thing is that we're three meters off the ground. So we're going to have to remove this and then place this maybe on a floor around here if we want it in line, which we do because we obviously want to play around with water. So if we run over here, I've had to place these down so that we could get a good view really what they need to have and i think the smart mod had this i may be mistaken but the ability to look where you're placing them and then like hold a button such as control or even click it once down just to have it in the spot that you need it and then you can walk around and check that it's in the right spot before you place it because i ended up placing this again and it was in the wrong spot and i had to delete it all and i was rather miffed off but anyway we're at the point now where hopefully that is in the correct spot and here you go you can see that if we place these down we have a storage system which is starting to come together i'm really happy with this actually i also had to uh remove some of these just so that we could uh, place the in fact we're gonna have to remove that place the storage down and then afterwards we'll either clip into it or we'll try and find some kind of solution but i think we'll have another floor above here maybe we'll do some kind of uh, archway like an apex here and then have the resources going across on top. Hmm, stuff to play around with. And here we are, so I have expanded this. We've added a, an extra blueprint on the end of both. And as you can see, I've changed it to concrete. And then what I've done is I've taken these beams and we have run these on a slight pivot or diagonal. Ooh, that, I kind of like that. Might have to do that in a different build. Um, yeah, we've done it on a, a, a diagonal and then we've added the signs underneath and then I filled out the section underneath the walkways because I felt it just looked a bit flimsy. Uh, unfortunately, we do have to live with the, the Z fighting there. But overall, I'm pretty happy with how this looks. The next thing that we need to do is start bringing the items in. As you can see, we've got everything stored here. Uh, so we'll start organizing the lines and then from there start housing it. From the outside here, you can see what we're dealing with. We're going to have to bring each line along here. So for example, this one we're going to have to place what, about here. And then we can run this into here. And we're going to have to do this for each of the individual lines going in. And we'll have the lines going along this section and coming from the uh, the build here. I've just realized these are Mexican colors. We've got green, white, and red. Uh, how incredibly apt given that I'm in Mexico right now. It's only taken me like six months to realize. And then above here, we're going to have to sort out the floor for taking these. I think we'll bring this up slightly so that we have a bit of space above the top of these in this area. Otherwise, it's going to look too cramped. It's no way near finished, but we are starting to make some real progress with this. We've added the slight ramp above us. Um, that's so that all the items above can be sorted. And then you can see here that we've got the items coming in. We have our cable and our wire, and they're all being displayed here. We've got our screws. And more importantly, if we go over here, we have our recycle spot. So if I go to here and then I add, say, all of our steel beams, uh, you can see this will run to our sushi line, and then it will sort amongst the, the spots. Obviously, we've got steel right here. And then once these are filled, 
it won't be. Um, but once it does, all of these will carry on overflowing, as I mentioned before, across to the awesome sink. The line of resources is taking forever and I, I'm a little bit worried about it. It looks quite clean here, but it, it's it's going to be a mess. I, c I can just see this all going wrong as we add more and more items to this. Um, so I'm not sure what the solution to this is just yet, but we're going to run with it for now and We'll rework it if we need to. Quickly, before I get started on the, the rest of the stuff that I need to do, I did want to just show you that we've started bringing the items up onto here. This is where they will be overflown, and then they will run along here to their given sinks. And at this point, I'm now working on the outer wall. Um, we're going to have to have a entrance. Ooh, ooh, hmm. How are we gonna do that? Road barrier and stick this here for now. I don't know if we'll keep this like this. We might change it slightly. Uh, I do want to have supports coming out of here for the train station and the, the monorail, but I haven't really thought through that just yet. For now, I'm just trying to get the outer border of the build so that we can start plotting what we want to do with it. The other thing is that it's going to be a big building, so we've got extra space. I'd quite like to do some potentially expanding this this way and then adding storage for items that we find when exploring. I've also had a touch of difficulty trying to make the end hit. I always say that I'm not gonna do weird, complicated shapes, and yet here we are. Uh, but the only way we've been able to make it look half decent is by adding this, because we just can't find a section where it nicely intersects all together. And of course, by doing this, we're going to have a problem with the inputs of the items. Oh, I, I love this. Oh, I should have done the building first, then added the inputs. Oh well. well. We'll see what we come up with. I've decided that at the top of this, we're going to run a line of red. I'm trying to keep it in the, the same theme as the factory next to it. So the idea is that though they're two separate sections, they should be... Uh, noticeably similar, even if they're not exactly the same. I've had to leave that open. I just, I don't know what we're gonna do about that. And then we need to fill this in, and I'd love to try something a little bit more complicated with the um, the roofing, but I'm not quite sure what we're going to do. I don't know why I say this. I don't know why I say I want to try something more complicated, because really, with any of these builds, what you want to be doing is something that's simple and easy to replicate uh, so that it makes life a lot easier for you. It's a lot quicker and uh, doesn't get boring. But I'm not very good at that. <laughs> I'll save that for 1.0. We're now going to zoop at the top of here. We're going to add the... I don't want to say the ceiling. I think we're going to use this as part of the factory above this because I'm worried we don't have enough space below. And we'll probably run the sinks along here as well eventually. I do need to also, you can see we've got the basis for where the train station's going to be. And the line's gonna run through here. And I want to do something in regards to the exit. And because it's on a slant, it's going to be a little bit interesting to do. Let's just lift that up to there. And then from here, we're going to grab this piece. Can, can we snap that in? So we'll place that there. And then if we just run this across the top, we'll try and repeat this on the other side as well. I think it works. Cool. Okay, so this is going to be the height of the ceiling once it's all done, which means we've got a fair amount of building to go yet. I wasn't feeling comfortable with the amount of space at the bottom that was being used up by the awesome sinks. So the ones that were here and also to the left we've got rid of and placed them above. So we have a total of six awesome sinks there. It does mean that we've had to somehow loop the items around to this side. And with us having lifted those awesome sinks above, it does make everything a lot more cleaner. There's a lot more space for the 
factory and we also have plenty of space on the second floor for the factory as well. And speaking of a clean factory, you can see that we've run a cable across to that section of the wall there, which is going to be running all of our power for this. With the awesome sinks in place and the cabling done, the next thing that we need to do is just close off all of this. We're going, oh dear. Oh dear. Okay. There we go. We're just going to bring this up and then from here, we're going to start doing the roof to this, but I do want to do something a little bit interesting. We're going to grab our road barriers and then from here, I'm going to grab these and replace them holding control. And the idea will be to run an open windowed roof along the top, but I'm not sure whether we should do it lengthways or width ways. You know what? It is so much easier doing it on here because you have the free placement. It hadn't even occurred to me. So rather than having to place all of those blummin barriers and then replacing them, I could have just done this from the get go. Uh, that's providing it works, of course. And here is the moment of truth. So hopefully, oh, that's not good. Oh wait, yeah, here we go. That works. And if we set this to blueprint mode, can we just snap it onto the end? Oh, that is so much easier. Fantastic. By the way, this blueprint is particularly easy to set up. If you want to do it yourself, you most certainly can. But if you are a member of our Patreon, all of our blueprints that you see us use are available as a bonus for those who join. Um, so if you are interested in saving yourself some time, do check that out. I'll put a link to the Patreon in the description below. I've done the same kind of slotted roof here. However, we did use the barriers just to add a little bit more detailing, just to break up the monotony of the, the slotted roofs. I like what they are, they are how, the, how they look, but I did feel that we needed to add something else. And I very much feel that with the parallel lines running perpendicular to it all, and then the middle section more artistic, it really does look great. And if I'm honest, the shape really works well alongside the main factory. I think that's because we're following on with the shape that we had before, but I'm really liking this and I can definitely see this expanding outwards. With the roofing section done, we're going to have to place a factory there. Now we have the recycle section here for anything we want to get rid of that's on our persons. But if we come back from exploring, we have the factory spot. This is where we'll put any of these items. This is just a little plan for me so that we know what we need to have either going to storage such as the food although we can make inhalers from them so maybe we'll have to do that but more importantly at the moment it's these things so we have the dna capsules which we can produce and then sync over here with these items that we need to produce into the, the DNA first. And then we also have the slugs. So we're going to do all of that up above next to the train station. And that factory will appear here after I do the clap of my hands. Pretty cool party trick, I know. Over here, this is where the slugs are going to be turned into a, a little slushy. Uh, these are going to be brought up from below here and then split between these three little sections. And then further along, we have all of the alien DNA stuff. These are being sent along a manifold to these two constructors, which are going to be producing the alien DNA. All of the output will be sent along here. And then you can see how we've nicely placed these against the lower pillar. And I just think it looks so clean. Uh, I love it, I really do. This is something that I think would look really cool in a lot more factories. You can see here that we've got the little grates coming down and I've tried to follow on with the slopes so that the, the style is very similar and it just feels very, not, not natural in the nature sense, but it, it it works together, it, it synergizes well. And I'm quite happy with what we've done here, but I do think we need to add more, 
particularly on this section here. I don't think this is enough. Uh, I have actually worked on the other side for the entrance of the trains. That was a pain. I'll show you what I've done there. I must admit, looking at it from this angle, I really like it. So we played around with the, the jagged angles and then also these metal struts with a little bit of a highlight to the lighting on the inside. It was such a pain to do, but I'm really happy with how it's turned out. Thinking about it, I'm not sure whether I want this to be the entrance or the exit for the train. I think it would be really cool to see it exit this way. But the idea is that the train will be able to siphon off items from the storage below so that it can be all stored in there and then I can call the train from wherever I am in the world to bring me the stuff that I need in order to build. So that's the kind of plan with this, but we've still got a long way to go because we haven't even unlocked trains yet. This particular section could definitely do with some TLC. Um, <laughs> for now, it's kind of uh, like in its place until we fully utilize all of this, which won't be for this episode. Uh, I'm quite happy as it is, but the idea is that the items will come through and be dropped off here. And then on the other side, though it's not powered yet, this is all the stuff for the biomass. And then you can see that we're now bringing all of, this is temporary by the way, all of the items that were in the storage here are being sent along this sushi belt along here and into the storage. With everything in the storage now working, I thought I'd do just a little bit of quick decoration and try and improve the little bits. Uh, as you can see, we have worked on the little slopes and I think it works really well. All we've done is added the painted beams. And I'm not sure how I managed this, but for some reason, as soon as we place these in line heading down here, you can see that they're just showing at the end. And that, I just love it. I think it works so well. That's one thing we've done. Also below, I've walled off everything. We've got the glass wall, well, glass roofing above, which allows us to see the awesome sink. And then we've done some colored decoration just with the wall here. I'm thinking it's looking really nice, though it's not fully finished, I guess you could say, because I've still got a few of these that I need to fill up. We've also got plenty of space um, behind all of this uh, for another factory. It's, it's looking a little bit sparse at the moment. So we're probably gonna put something else here as well. We also need to work on these resources. Um, these are being used. These lines aren't being utilized yet and just cleaning up how the outside looks. Oh, speaking of which, I also played around with the entrances a bit. And so we have the steel section, it's all coming through here, then dropping below. Oh no, we're, we're, we're under the water here, but I, if you can't see it, I'm, I'm not too bothered. And then we've got another one just above. So this like glass bridgeway into the area that it needs to go. And then finally, the newest uh, addition, which uh, you can see we have the rotors, the motors, and the stators all coming through here. So it is looking a bit cleaner. It's just, I don't know, there's still more to be done, but there's only so much we can fit in a single episode. So we are going to leave it there, but if you did enjoy this, please do hit the thumbs up. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. Oh, and the next project that we're going to be working on is this oil rig that I'm still working on in the streams over on Twitch at the moment. So if you are interested in checking that out, do join me over on twitch.tv forward slash total eclipse but guys until next time special thanks does go to all of our amazing supporters most notably our solar eclipse patrons james owen fireflesh and trebor as well as our lunars the calamity ben star shoku the emon wolf and that dude aw as well as our blood moon of the day which today is adam the useless until next time as always ciao for now